And in a lot of reasons, because we have had so many issues with suicide, with people talking about being bullied, being harassed at school, being threatened, there being acts of violence at school, each of us in the state of Alabama that was a school system had to come up with a policy. This was signed into law by Governor Bob Riley when he was back in, op in office in 2009. Our first year in Baldwin County that the policy went into effect was last year. So this is our second year of the policy being in effect. Is anyone aware of it? That's not good. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at very quickly. Look then, forget the PowerPoint, and look specifically at the anti-harassment policy. Because what I want you all to be aware of as students in the school system, there is a policy. We've talked a lot about what is bullying, the different types of bullying, what can happen if you are bullied. We've looked at suicide. We've looked at cyberbullying. But I want you to know, aside from going to talk to an adult, to talk to a friend, to do all of those things that we have been talking about, there are some legal ramifications if people harass you, bully you, threaten you, do things that they are not supposed to do. There are legal ramifications. We hope it never gets to that point, but there are some, and more specifically, there is a policy in place. The same way we may say there's a policy you have to wear uniforms, there's a policy you can't do this, you can't do that, there's a policy that you can't harass. Basically, um, that Student Prevention Act that was the PowerPoint that we're just kind of overlook, it outlined and it said that the State Department of Education gave us a model policy. So when I wrote this policy, basically I followed the model policy that the state has said. It follows pretty much the same wording, the same information. Now like any policy we have, I'm sure it can be better. I'm sure there's some things that have been omitted and perhaps even after you all go through this weekend, you may be able to come back and tell me, we need to beef up this area. We need to add some more to this to make it better. And I welcome that. But this is the model that we pretty much use. Section one, if you look at the anti-harassment policy, basically the State Department said you had to say that harassment, violence, and any threat of violence would be prohibited. It would not be allowed, it would not be tolerated on any school campus. Now I know that it does go on. I'm very well aware of that. But again, if we look at the policy, it's not supposed to, and it's not supposed to be tolerated. It is not supposed to be allowed on that school campus. And any student that violates this particular policy is subject to disciplinary action. Now you all know when you get written up and you go to the office for talking back to your teacher, for fighting, for doing whatever, not maybe you, but other people on your campus, they may get OCS, they may get suspension, they may, we used to have Saturday school, um, they may get after school detention, whatever it is. The same type of disciplinary action is feasible should it be found that a student has been harassing another student. So that's what we mean when we're talking about subject to this disciplinary action. In section two, the policy said that we had to give definitions. We had to define, we had to specify what did we mean. So specifically, what does the term harassment mean? We had to give a definition for that. And that's what you see in um, the letter A, the term harassment as used in this policy means continuous pattern of intentional behavior, and you can read the rest. It also stipulates to constitute harassment, a pattern of behavior may do any of the following. And you see that those bulleted items. So the one thing that I want you to understand is when we talk about harassment, there is a definition. It has been outlined, it has been um, explained so that everyone knows this is what we mean when we say you cannot be harassed. Look on the second page. B talks about what is violence. What does violence mean? When we say violent acts will not be tolerated, that has been explained. When we say a threat of violence, that word has been defined. Intimidation, that word has been defined. Hostile environment, that word has been defined. So I want you to look at this 
when you get a chance, but understand that that was a part of what the state said. You had to go in and define each of these words so that everyone knows what it means, what you're talking about, and what those expectations are. And then specifically the term student, anybody that's enrolled in the Baldwin County Public School System, we know is a student. So you as students are not to be subjected to any of these things that are listed. Now in section three, we had to give a description of the behavior that was expected of students. And this is listed in your code of conduct where we said that they are expected to be treated with courtesy, respect, dignity, and to comply with what is stated in the student code of conduct. But look at B. One of the things that we had to do in 3B is specifically say, come up with a list of characteristics of things that would not be allowed. For instance, um, an exhaustive list so that when we're talking about harassment or you're bothering someone, you cannot bother them because of their race, because of their sex, because of their religion, because of their national origin, if they have a disability, if you turn the page marital status, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Those were the list of things that we said a student cannot be harassed, cannot be bullied, cannot be any of these things based upon what's listed. Now I've forgotten offhand, all of that was listed in the model policy, but I can't remember if it was sexual orientation or gender identity that I added. One of those two, and I just can't remember, was not necessarily in the model policy. But I knew that we needed it, and I wish I could remember which of those two. So whichever one it is, our policy is somewhat different from others in the state because we've added or beefed up that one particular thing that others may not have. So when we're talking about bullying and what it is and you can't be harassed and all of those things that I've just explained, know that this is our list that we're saying you specifically can't be bullied or harassed based upon any of these things. Look at section four. There are consequences for your behavior. Now again, we have not said step one, this is gonna happen, step two, this is gonna happen, because it depends upon the what you do. Sometimes the what you do, if it's bad enough, you can be expelled right off the bat. Sometimes if the what you do, you might can be suspended right off the bat. But sometimes it's a series of steps. You may get a warning, a detention, or whatever. But know that the policy stipulates there is a series of graduated consequences if you violate what is written in this policy. In 5A, all of that jargon that you see there explains how you are to report a harassment complaint. Part of what we had to do in the, the State Department said any forms that you use have to be board approved. So this is what the harassment complaint report form and the harassment witness statement form, that is what those are. Those have been board approved. When the policy was um, put into place, these forms were also put into place. So let's say any of you, your friends, or anyone you know on your school campus wants to report a harassment. They are asked to complete a harassment complaint report form. Now where can you find this form? You can find it in your principal's office, the assistant principal's office, or the counselor's office. It's also online, but that's a little cumbersome sometimes to follow that online. But I need for you to check when you go back to school on Monday. If it's not in one of those three offices, then I need to know because we've got to get the word out. Because if it's not there, then how can you follow through on what we're asking you to do? So this is the complaint form. We ask that you fill it out like everything that we do in, in education, everything is documented. But we have documentation that you've made a report, that you've made a complaint, and we have what it is. Nobody is supposed to see this except the administrator, and usually that's going to be the assistant principal that's dealing with the discipline. But you can fill this out, or perhaps your parents can fill it out. And then we ask that you give that to the administration. 
The only thing that we stipulated, let's say if I'm a teacher on that campus, I can't fill this out. Now certainly if you come and tell me about a problem, that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to address it. But I'm just saying as far as this form, it needs to be your words, your handwriting, your doing whatever. We're not checking for grammar and all of that. We just need it in your own words, what is the problem? The next thing that you have is the harassment witness statement form. This won't apply to you as much, but as an administrator, when I go to start investigating your claim, when I go to see who's done what, what happened, what took place, you know as well as I know, sometimes we have to call in some witnesses. We've got to call in some other people who can corroborate what you're saying, who can say, yes, I was there, I saw it, I heard it, I witnessed it with my own eyes. And again, they're going to fill out this form so we have documentation. So both of these forms are very important and it's what we're going to use when we are investigating what it is that you complained about. Because the bottom line for us as adults, we have to take what you say seriously. We cannot just say, oh, that's just them being them. It's nothing to that. I don't know that. We have to investigate. If we find out it's nothing to it, so be it. But you're not going to find that out until you investigate. So that is what four, I mean, Section 5A is saying. We have to investigate how you're going to report it. Then in 5B, it explains how the investigation is going to be conducted. And basically, we're saying you have to investigate this. Within a reasonable time period, when this is brought to your attention, you have to go in, you have to investigate, you have to find out what has happened, what has taken place, what is the problem. And if we find in that investigation that another student has wronged you, then that child is to be um, punished in some particular way. Some type of disciplinary action is to be given to that particular student as a punishment for what they've done. 5C explains that you never know how sometimes you go and you tell or you complain and then the person comes back and they want to retaliate. They want to get back at you because you've told on them. You've gotten them in trouble. 5C says you're not supposed to do that. If you retaliate, if you try to get back at someone, if you do something that um, is going against this policy, then that person can very well get in trouble again. 5D says referrals can be made by parents or guardians to law enforcement. So if your parents feel like I'm not satisfied at the school level or I want to take it further or if whatever it is that has happened, they have every right to press charges against this student with your local law enforcement. This is what the policy says. And then on um, E, 5B on page 4, again, the policy stipulates, as we've just talked about, suicide. We have to take this seriously. If a child threatens by some chance um, suicide, then we have to inform that student's parent. We have to do our part to make them aware of this and not just brush it off because we don't know if indeed that person is going to go through on what he or she has said. And then the last section six talks about this policy is going to be published, it's going to be disseminated, made available to students, parents, legal guardians by any means um, that we normally would use to notify people of things, including the website. So in a nutshell, this is the Baldwin County Public School System's anti-harassment policy. We do have a policy in place, and we do want you to know that we will not tolerate you being victimized in any particular manner, and if you are, you do have a means of recourse. You can go and report it and know that it is against our rules, just like we have all of these other rules in the school system. Are there questions? Any questions? All righty, thank you.